Abscast. Well, this is what I was going to say, because I likened Scotland for the last 20 plus years to what Wales potentially might be about to go through. And I go back to having quality players. Wales have got a better, they've got a better set of ingredients, and I think they can have a better outcome than the sum of their parts at the moment. They're making handling errors, and I think they're making poor decisions when they've got ball in hand. Do you go for rocks and malls, front, you know, solid forward play, or do you go for kicking points over like the Neil Jenkins, Dan Bigger style, or do you play a running game if you've got something like a Shane Williams? But it looks like, and so I don't want to throw coaches under the bus, but it looks like mm-hmm. Wales have been missing an identity. And they've had a good group of well, they players. Didn't, they didn't really have one with Pivac. He, it, with the Scarlets, mm. obviously they would they, but the, but that is the style of rugby that Wales is famous for. You know, throwing the ball around, running it. it but you need the players to suit that. Whereas with the na- with the national team, obviously it's Warren Ball. He's just smashing it. It's not very attractive, but if he's winning, you you, you can you probably could deal with it. Whereas <coughs> if you go back to oh, what would have been the first Grand Slam, two thousand five, they played. <coughs> they ran Scotland off the park once they beat England. So one, what was it, Gavin? So we're going back. So Gavin William yeah, with, his, yeah. with Gavin with, Gavin Hansen with Henson, the hair, yeah, with and the his, boots, the tan. Yeah, and that last um, minute kick against yeah. England. Yeah, so that's obviously that is the start of the revolution, so to speak, as in in Wales. And well, this is more was so that to... not was that not Steve Hansen era two thousand five? No, it's after it. After Steve Hansen. It's after, so we've had to, let's say three, four Kiwis. <laughs> And yeah, one wealth person in between. Yeah, it's but they've been characters. building though. But that was they were building a cycle. You were getting a group of players who were, um, even when you think about, uh, was it oh, Ch- uh, Colin Charvis? Even that, even that period where Wales were one or two games away from winning, you were building. You had a, a pool of twenty players who could compete. On your day, you'd give anyone a game, anyone, and then you just needed to kind of get over the line. A bit like Ireland, you know, they had O'Driscoll and Gordon Darcy and all these kind of players and it took them mm-hmm. one what was it 10 years ago 12 years ago whenever it was where they actually got over the line beat England I think at Twickenham got a grand slam and now they've had a 10 year thing where they've been right up it almost you need that one but but you had a group of players who knew their identity yeah but you... the Irish it's it's they've got solid foundations true Leinster Munster yeah, true. Oh, I mean, I wouldn't put Con- I wouldn't put Connacht up there with the fr- with the three fr- fr- provinces, but as in, they're successful domestically, yeah, and in Europe. So that's true. The, the success breeds success. So if you then put, would you say Munster and Leinster together, it's going to cause there's going to cause a lot of damage because there's a lot of sim- there's symmetry, there's chemistry with those players because they play week in week out of with course. each other. Of course. Whereas, I'm not saying this is not an excuse, but with with Wales, with Pivac, definitely the the people are not being picked on form. Yeah, it was like favoritism. Point, yeah. I'm thinking, well, at the na- at the national team, it should be the, the obviously there's politics in this as well. But yeah. if the best people are aren't playing there's a problem because why why are the people that are performing at, at regional level club level performing okay it might not be your charismatic charismatic person that you're looking for the poster boy type every, co- yeah, every yeah. coach every coach has got one of the, even I faced that in sport in terms of they had an, an ideal of what they were looking for. The golden child, that's it. That's it's my. It's like, well, most of the sports I did, they, that person didn't exist. It's like, not even, even one of them, Rowan in particular, in my classification, they're still not six foot plus and 18 stone. So it was like this ideal that, that you wanted to, to, to almost replicate what was working in the Olympic pro and put it, and plop it into the part. It's like, well, I'm not six foot plus, but I'm battering people that you're putting in front of me that way more than me. And it's not even a contest. So 
the the, the argument of and and Warren did it a little bit in in, in the first game against Ireland in terms of what went back to tried and tested. If they'd have been more clinical, it might have been a more more of a more of a tussle. Ended up not being. Uh, okay. They drew the second half. This is the story of Welsh rugby. It's either one half or the other. <laughs> they turn up one or the other. They can't put an 80 minutes performance in for a. Uh, and this is going back probably a long, 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 long time. It's like oh, they nearly lost, but they lost as a, they won the match, but. They've fallen off a cliff. Scotland was the reverse. They show up in the first half and they're garbage in the second. They can, when I went and go look at the, the result, because my family doesn't like watching it because it stresses them out. Um, so rather than watch people out watching again, that I know they're probably gonna lose. Um, and and obviously all this the, the hype of it was Welsh fans that were going up to Murrayfield were going up in hope, not in expectation. Mm. Whereas in the years past, it's like, well, we'll beat Scotland. It's just a matter of how much. Um, and that's no dis disrespect to Scottish rugby. But did I expect them to only score seven points? And there's something, obviously, something wrong because to score only 17 points out of two games mm. and conceding, I think it's like nearly 70 points. Whereas on the hand, other hand, um, well, Italy nearly beat France. I didn't see that coming, but they have beaten France in the past. To oh, what did the BBC put as a comment? Um, England had a pragmatic win against Italy. I was like, I watched the game. It's like they don't. Somebody doesn't know what the word pragmatism means because it, it means it means kicking the ball away multiple times when you're in the opposition. No, but as in, it's, 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 <laughs> it's if you were to use it from a business sense, because uh, I watched um, social media video, of the rise of Singapore, the business person used that's one why one reason why Singapore was successful was they're pragmatic that they took capitalist uh, policies and socialist policies put them together. I wouldn't put that in the same ecosystem of England beating Italy mm. you should beat them and normally it's 50 60 70 it's a, it's a massive margin because the Italians have be beaten themselves in most cases uh in the last 20 minutes so to win by what was it eight points something like points. that yeah what well, it's relatively Italy, close it was close it, it's Italy are improving obviously um Steve Borthwick's only two games into his regime so i'll, I'll, I'll give him some slack give, give him some time as as a well i'm i'm, I'm quarter english anyway so I, I win anyway all around all around <laughs> but in terms of i wouldn't go to england to, just more so from the media perspective because it's always are oh, england this england that that's why the celtic nations don't like the english nothing to do with um the individual it's just the media drum it's like oh, england doing this yeah, but what about all the other countries? If they're in competition, you should give them e composure because it's the BBC. Yeah, but you know, you know that the BBC and all the media outlets are just full of, um, you know, what it's it's all propaganda, it's all hype, it's all narrative, it's all whatever, whatever, whatever favoritism. They they'll never give a completely rounded story about anything. Well, that's journalism. So, but that's supposed to, this supposed to be by um by impartial. impartial and objective. Impartial. But going back to what you were saying about Wales, I look at Wales and England in the same breath, in the sense that. You have a domestic game where you've got a scattering of talent where, you know, you might have half the Welsh players playing over in England, but you've got players who are playing at the highest level. They are, you know, you've got players at Northampton, you've got players who will play in London Irish, wherever, wherever. And it was the same with England and you bring them together. And if they didn't have a set identity, whether it be under Clive Woodward or whoever it might have been, then you had a really disjointed output because the players, you might have a very strong forward pack because of what... Um, you know uh say saracens or wasps or whatever we're doing at the time you might have an incredible back line if you look at what we had with mike brown or you have now what we had with marcus smith you know these are players who are playing upright attacking ball in hand rugby mm -hmm. do you have a coach who encourages that or not do you have a game plan and to me it looks like um, wales and england for no, the last no no it's not it's not really got an identity and it just went from bad to worse that's what i'm saying last and that's just year, similarity. You think, you're thinking you go into a game against Italy, it's like, okay, we've had a poor tournament. 
of I think it was like one we beat in Scotland. It's like oh, that's not it's not too bad. Uh, I think any Welsh fan would take a win over England, and who can lose every other game. That's that's okay. Um, it's it's not, and it's it's still not satisfactory because it's like that's still lose losing record. But as in, it saves face because you can rub it for one year. You can rub it in the face uh, by going over the seven bridge and thing like that uh, for 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 three hundred sixty five day, sixty four days till the next one. But to lose in the manner in which they did on the last game of the Six Nations like to Italy was embarrassing because it's like well they're they're going for the jugular until the last the I think it was like they won in the 82nd minute it's thinking why are you being so loose winning the game why not try and kill it because enough enough experience to not giving them a sniff because that fullback now is because he's running riot this season. So that was probably his moment in the spotlight. Are oh, the doors open? I'm going to take it. Did he expect to score? Probably not. But to kind of go from, okay, we might finish fourth to finishing bottom in a, like, a split second and then it just got worse. Not winning any games. in the, so, so if you're getting... Okay, I I I I get why the re, the the union is playing New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, almost everything because it's cash flow. But there'll come a point where people aren't going to go. Oh, it's, there's no there's no prestige about it because if you think of the teams in the seventies and the eighties and probably earlier, they did not play each other so much as they do now. They're literally playing. Okay, we'll play Australia, New Zealand in the winter. And go to a summer tour of Argentina, New Zealand, or something. like well, it, it, they know each other so much. It's almost like if you were to do like a comparison with the NFL, when they go into their 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 actual divisions because they play each other twice a year, they can scheme, they they can be able to okay, this person's good at this, 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 and this. We'll take that out of his game, we'll make him focus on his weaknesses. Give people high ball, see if they can take a ball under pressure. Um, so, obviously, all these nations that are on the ascension are coming up. So, should Italy be demoted and playing whatever the tier below is and playing the competition of the, t the next, so like the Georges and things like that, thinking, well, George is no pusher over. They've got forwards in France and England so the forward back is good to lose to them you're thinking oh gosh this thing of relegation probably needs to come in and if well, I don't think England and France will go down but they'd have to be pretty bad that particular year but Ireland could go I don't think Ireland for a while will go down but say Scotland Italy or Wales could go down that's the consequence that's progression that's what's right for the regions won't uh, sorry the unions won't do it because we're talking about income because i'm not playing england ireland france the top tier of northern hemisphere rugby will people go and watch it um if the patriot the patriotic people will because it's the, what's on the badge it doesn't matter if they're playing georgia and i can't think of the next probably the next european countries on that list Hey, if you're bad, most other sports have relegation. It's only the American model that doesn't have relegation. So they, if you were to speak to an American, about American sports, what's relegation? But there should be a consequence of you being bad because ultimately you need to go back and kind of go, okay, we're bad. We need to look at our, our pathway and our development. Um, um, why why are the, the regions not producing or the clubs not producing for the national team like they were almost 20 years ago.